Gubu Nara Nari Stephen Kim. I am Stephen Kim. I am a language teacher at Warabinda State School. Yeah, my language mentor was my father. Uh, unfortunately, he passed just recently, a month ago. And he was always a very, very clever person, had a photographic memory. Um, never drank in his life, so obviously that's why he had a photographic memory. And uh, when we were kids growing up, he used to take us out of the bush and we always talked about stuff, so when we wanted something, we had to say the language name for it. And so we recorded him back in the 70s and uh, kept on recording him from the 70s up until now, videotapes, audio tapes, that type of stuff. And we sort of just held on it for just for the family, basically. But uh, now, now we can introduce it into the school. So uh, two years ago, I had an open heart surgery and I wondered what sort of work I was gonna do. And I went down to the state school one day and they said, do you want a job? And I said, well, oh, yeah, I suppose we could have a, give a go at this, you know? Anyway, um, I've been there for two years now. This is going into the second year, basically, and last year I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And we, we have to go do all classes from preppies right through to grade six. And then that was a bit of a challenge, uh, working out what do you teach preppies when they can't even understand English. Um, and then as you get on, what, how, how intensive do you make it and how many words should you teach but it's not just all about the language either. It's it's about uh, the animal stories. It's about the art, because you can't just keep concentrating on the language. You've got to keep diverting the kids' attention. You know, they you can only hold the kids' attention for so long. So if they do their work with the language, then we say, oh, let's do some proper drawings now, and we explain to them the meanings of art. We explained to them in Wurrubinda we uh, still go hunting, so right now it's porcupine season during NADOC week. Wintertime we hunt porcupines, so the kids know that. But uh, some of the questions that I asked them was, uh, how can you tell a male from a female? And they, and they didn't know, so we explained what a male and a female is and that the porcupine lays an egg. And then we, in my lingo, we call it budbearer. So we teach them the budbearer language, uh, name for the porcupine. And yeah, you know, with the emus, with the snakes, with all those type of things that my father told me. So now I've been developing little, little uh, presentations, little booklets, uh, with the modern technology that we got. Uh, you can put the voices in and all that type of stuff. But I'm really looking for a, uh, because the kids are into iPads. I'm really looking for an iPad application that would make it, and a user-friendly one, not a real complicated database type of one. And so. I'm at this conference here and um, hopefully I'll get some information on how to do that. Well, I suppose an inspiring project in the last couple of years is putting it all together and gathering more information. So we started out with about oh, maybe 100 words, now I'm up to 650 words. And this is all from help from state libraries, from the land uh, language councils and all that. And they gave me access to information and from all the different linguists and so some of the words your dad told me, we just had words, straight out words, you know. But now we've been able to find the uh, words for this and that and who and how and show me. So we never had those words, so now I can say to the kids, show me your eye or whatever, you know, so, you know. And so we know the word for show me and we know the word for this is, you know, so this is, this is my dilly, you know, jilangu dilly, you know. So that made it a lot better, and yeah, just just with the kids every day experimenting, uh, trying to keep in line with the uh, the uh, uh, school curriculum. So they have this thing like um, explicit instruction, and, and they go, "I do, we do, you do." So then I put our Aboriginal words into that. You know, you then tell them say, "You got to say do this," you know. So for instance, yinda yugunu mantha, you eat bread. Then we go nyali yugunu mantha, weed bread, you know. So you gotta gotta go that way with that. Or this is my eye, you know, jilungu dili, jilungu wallu for here. So yeah, so we can actually construct sentences, little short sentences. We may not be doing it exactly the way the way it should be, but we're just trying to do it as simple as we can to get some of the kids to understand and recognise the words so that we can see if they've really got it. 
so sometimes we have to break the words up into syllables as well, mm. and uh, we have to clap syllables. Yeah. Just trying to keep in line with the teachers and what they're teaching them in English. <coughs> and we try, I'm trying to write, rewrite the language, not rewrite the language, but put the language into that format. Yeah. And the same with, um, yeah, yeah, the, the breaking the syllables, clapping. Uh, one other thing that I've noticed this year is the writing. So. Queensland State Schools are teaching them Q cursive writing, so I've changed all my presentations and writing to the form of writing that they're supposed to be doing, and so that might help them. Mm. But okay. yeah, we had a different writing to what they're supposed to be writing down in their book, so even that little tiny thing like that might make a difference.